picked up this little tractor recently, and I think it's unusual enough to where some of you might be interested in seeing more about it. So, how about you hang out while I try to bring it back to life? Not going to be a perfect restoration, of course, but at least it'll be up and running again. As for what this is, it is a simplicity Sunrunner. Honestly, it's a name better fit for a boat, but hey, <laughs> sounds pretty cool. As far as what it is mechanically, well, it's a uh, little front mount lawnmower. There should be a deck that goes on the front here. I have it just off camera. In the back, we have a little dump bed. Then under the bed, there will be a battery compartment. And also on the back here, behind the battery, would sit a couple of counterweights. But they're really heavy, and since I have to move this thing by hand, I took them off for now. As for what actually powers this little beast, well, in this particular case, it's a 12-horse Briggs & Stratton motor. Typical lawnmower engine. For the transmission, it is rather unusual since it is a hydrostatic, with some kind of weird belt drive, and then it goes into a chain, and... Who knows what all? I'll get into it shortly. Of course, on the other on the other side of the hydrostat, we got a cooling fan, a bunch of wires, and oddly enough, a second tank. Now, these fuel tanks, despite looking like just a random addition, they are a factory thing. It's not just something that somebody put on this tractor. As for the controls, we got the steering wheel, which which actually turns the back wheels instead of the front. And the way it does that is through a cable. Very similar to a boat motor, oddly enough. And on the front, the steering shaft just goes to a pulley. In addition to the steering wheel, up on the dash, we have a throttle control. And of course, got the ignition key, which does nothing at this time. Got a uh, forward reverse uh, gear selector, range selector, for lack of a better word. And of course, the brake pedal. Last but not least, got a couple of levers. This, this one on the right side is for the lift in the deck. And this one on the left is for engaging the PTO. And I believe the way it does it is simply by tension in the belt. It goes to the deck. Now before getting into the engine and into the mechanicals, let me take care of couple of bigger issues, like the tires on the left side. Because like I said, I have to move this thing by hand, and it is rather heavy. Alright, got the tractor up on a little jack, and also took some of the bodywork off to make it easier to see. Now usually if, I, if this was a car or whatnot, I would absolutely put it on jack stands or something similar. Wooden blocks if nothing else. But seeing that this is a small tractor and I'm not planning on, and I'm not planning on crawling under it, I think just one jack will hold it. As a side note, found a data plate. Not the, not that you can really read it, but it's there. For taking off the back back wheels, all you need is a flat screwdriver. Get it into the C clip. Right off the clip, and then the whole wheel just comes off the axle, just like on most lawnmowers. Now this particular tire looks really rotten. However, after looking at the size, it is 4.10-4 NHS. I believe NHS just says not for highway service. Now that size is very close to. A regular little wheel used for hand dollies, hand carts, you name it. The size of this particular one is 4.10 slash 3.5 dash 4. Presumably 4 on the end, just like with car tires, is the rim size. Therefore, I think this will fit perfectly well on the rim. For taking the old tire off the rim, and you can do it with screwdrivers, but I prefer 
there's little tire spoons. If you do use a screwdriver, be, be very careful about the sharp edges on it. And it's even better to smooth it out first with a grinder file, sandpaper, or whatever. Just so when you're prying, you don't damage the rim of the tire as well as the inner tube inside. Because these are tube tires, by the way, just like on most lawnmowers. To make dismantling easy, easier, a little soap water on the rim of the tire. And take one spoon, hook it over the edge of the wheel, and pry up. Make sure that the other side of the tire is in this groove right here. That's what gets a lot of people when they first learn how to change tires is that they would have side of the wheel or side of a tire up on the ridge here and they would pry and pry and tear and it just wouldn't go over because well this rim is actually really strong and has some wire inside it so you physically cannot just pry it off. Alright, so I got one in. Try to hook the other one in a similar fashion. Tire spoons do have two sides. One is a little hook and another one is just flat. So let's try the flat side. And there we go. Got it in the tire and just sort of walking it off the wheel. And just like that the wheel is out. And just like with most things, installation is the opposite of removal. However, this time I'm working on some cardboard just to minimize the amount of junk that might make it into the tire. So, first thing first, spray water, or spray soapy water, on the rim of the tire. Then, let's make this outside, so start with the back side. Push it in, take a spoon. There we go. Alright. Now the inner tube is back in the tire. Let's inflate it lightly. So it sort of seats. Because right now it's all scrunched up and it wouldn't, wouldn't fit too well. There we go, a couple of PSI will do. Stem is in the hole. Make sure it's pointed directly at the axle. If it's not, if it's at an angle, then once everything is mounted and the inner tube is inflated, it will actually hold it crooked like that and it will tear around around the stem. It will tear the inner tube. So keep it nice and straight. Put the edge of the tire in the groove. And now start slowly walking it back on the wheel. Also be very careful when you're putting the spoon inside there and you cannot see it. Make sure you're actually you actually feel that the spoon is directly on the rim and is not pinching anything. Pin, pinching a tube at this point is the easiest way to guarantee that you have to do all this all over again. Okay, some struggling later. I managed to get it all the way around. And now let's inflate the tube and seat the tire in place because right now the tire is not where it needs to be. No pop this time, but you can see that the tire is on the rim. There is no gap around it. And say it with me if you heard it before, installation is the opposite of removal. Take clip off, slide the wheel back on, and put the clip back into place. Hey, good.
Although later on I will put a washer in here between the clip and the wheel to keep this from moving around too much. I just don't have any on hand. Anyway, to ensure that the wheel spins freely and for a long time, a little bit of grease and wobble, wobble, wobble. It's fine. Those tires have been laying around for a few years. It will become circular in due time. And just like that, the back is done. So let's move on to the front. Now the front might be a bit trickier because unlike the back, it doesn't have a clip or a bolt or anything that holds the wheel onto the axle. So I'm not even sure how it's supposed to come off. Uh, so let's just say that it's rusted on there and let's not even bother. So the tractor is up on blocks. And just like with the back, uh, let's pull one side of the tire off the wheel, feed the inner tube in there, and by the way, the valve stem on this particular wheel is towards the inside of the tractor, not towards the outside like on the back. But still, get the side of the tire off the wheel, feed the inner tube in there, position the valve, st valve stem properly, put the tire back on the wheel, air it up, should be good to go. In theory. All right, easy enough. There's an old inner tube inside. So the condition that's in. Actually, it doesn't look doesn't look terrible. Put some air in it, see if it holds. And nope. So I might try to glue it up in the future. Might just cut it up, use and use it for rubber bands. But for the time being, and for the tractor, what I've got is a replacement. 13 by 5 dash 6 inner tube. And actually looking at it, well, once it airs up, it will probably be about the same diameter as the old one. Only downside I see now is the valve stem on this one is straight up and down, whereas the old one is curved. That might cause an issue. Now, looking at it, the hole for the valve stem is sort of at the bottom, so... Hopefully, maybe... Maybe it'll be all right. And now let's put some air in the tube just to see where it wants to be. And looking at where the valve stem naturally wants to sit, I think I think it'll be just fine. Easier than expected. Okay, let's put some air in her. Seems to be seems to be going on all right. Let's bring her up to pressure. That pressure being well, let's call it. What is it in there? Can you read? <laughs> well, let's call it 25. Usually, tractor tires want to be around 20, but 25 for now would be fine. Alright, now for the part that you've probably been looking forward to the most. Seeing if the thing even runs. But first thing first, got a couple of battery cables. Usually you would have a positive red and a negative black. However, in this case, they're both black cables. What do you do? Well, if we trace this one, you can see that it goes directly to the frame. Now, while there are some things that are uh, positive ground, 
This one's not one of them. It's way too new for that. So it's safe to say that this right here, this cable, is the positive. And if we trace it all the way back, it goes straight to the solenoid. So that confirms it. However, just to be on the safe side, I'll put a couple of cable ties around a cable. Prefer cable ties over marker or something like that. It just stays brighter for longer. Alright, cables are marked, battery is in. Let's hit the key and see what happens. Nothing, no signs of life. The dash is not even on. Okay. Is the battery good? Good enough, we would have done something. Okay, let's trace the cable. Does it go all the way? Does it go to the solenoid? Do we have power there? Yes. Alright, now do we have a fuse box? Potentially. Alright, testing between a random grounded bolt. Looking for power. Nothing. 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 And nothing. And nothing. Alright. And by the way, aside from and by the way, aside from a couple old wasp nests, there is no fuse box back there either. But what do we have here? Looks an awful lot like one of those self-resetting thermal breakers. Okay, is it bad by chance? One side. Oh, got power there. The other side. Now testing the breaker itself, not the wire. And we get nothing. So that's the problem right there. This breaker is out of commission. Judging by how it's sitting, so, sort of with the gap up, might have gotten some water in it, whatever. So, one little 3 8 bolt later, and we have ourselves a, it looks like a 20 amp self resettable breaker, thermal breaker, whatever you want to call it. Oh, the original may have gone bad, but luckily there is a replacement. Now, to keep stuff from possibly getting back in it. I've actually bent the tab up to where it will sit at an angle and also to make the bolt fit in a hole that's a little too small for it. I've simply clipped the tab and spread it out a little bit. Now one thing to note about these breakers that I didn't know before is that apparently they do have a battery side and the output side so you can't just plug them in randomly. With a new breaker back in there, battery hooked up, tractor up on jack stands, just because I don't know how neutral <laughs> the neutral in this is. Can we get some life? Yep, dash lights. What about the motor? Hey, she spins. Now, before seeing if she'll run, let's see if she got any oil. And survey says, well, she got some. Enough for now, with the air cleaner taken off, I can squirt some fuel down into the carburetor directly and see if that does anything. Give her the best possible chance of starting. Nothing. Well, that's unfortunate, but let's see if she at least has spark. And unlike some brave people, I'm not actually going to hold the thing. So plug in a spark tester, ground it. Let's see if she sparks. 
Yeah, not the strongest, but should be enough. And that also shows me that none of the safeties and things are active. Which, by the way, this right here is a safety switch that would have gone to the seat. It's bypassed for now. Give her another try. Okay, she is alive. So the problem was she wasn't, she just wasn't getting enough fuel. Alright, well, she is a runner, and it seems like the fuel pump is pulling fuel. So, let's put some gas in one of the tanks and see if the hydrostat works. I did notice the wheels were spinning some, but that just might be some drag. It might not really mean anything. Alright, give her some of the good stuff. 100% alcohol free gasoline. Got the fuel line hooked back up, air filter back on. I uh, did check the hydro oil, she has some. See if she'll start and idle, or at least start and run for a while. And she's surging a little bit. You didn't think I'd just leave without taking you for a little ride, now did you?
is far from perfect and definitely far from doing any mowing. But you know what? She just runs, she stops, she turns. Really good, actually. Although controls are kind of weird because she is a rear wheel steering. So you know what? In the end, it's not too bad. Pretty unique piece of machinery.